There we go. Elijah, how you doing, baby? Good. How you doing? I'm, I'm in Vegas, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Like, if, if anybody complains about being in Vegas, I'm just going to bring Elijah Garcia to knock their ass out. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Just yes, sir. You, just give you a freebie knockout. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That is uh, that's some uh, that's some crazy stuff. Yes, we are here in Vegas, ready to go. How you feeling, man? You've knocked out six out of your last eight opponents. No, I feel good. I feel ready. Uh, this fight, I'm not going to be looking for the knockout. I know. Uh, I think that's what caused the, uh, you know, that's what caused me to go full distance my last fight. You know, first couple of rounds, so I was looking for the knockout. But you know, it comes with experience, and uh, I'll be ready. I'll be ready to handle this task Saturday. You know, I always talk. I always talk about this. As you get older, you know, I'm I'm going to be fi I'll be 57 on Sunday, right? And so your body starts to fall apart as you get older. The only positive about getting older is that you get experience. Uh -huh. And that's, 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 that's right there. That's the beautiful, that's the example right there. Three years from now as a fighter, you're going to know so much more than you did three years prior. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you live, you learn. And a lot of times the aggressive nature of a boxer gets the best of him. Yeah. And it, it seems like you're trying to, tame the aggressiveness and keep it at an even keel where you can keep it steady and not let that emotion take over too much right yes sir um you know 15 and 0 12 knockouts every knockout i had didn't come with uh you know i it didn't come because i was looking for the knockout and uh you know it happened again in my last fight so it don't happen by coincidence and um you know this fight i'll be looking to showcase my skills show everybody what uh what a good jab I have and how I'm able to control the pace. What what made you get into boxing? Boxing, you know, I grew up playing football, baseball. I played a couple seasons in basketball, soccer. I had about 50 freestyle matches in wrestling. And, um, you know, boxing's a family affair. My dad fought, my grandpa fought, both sides of the family. You know, it was boxing around, and I just rolled into it. Okay, I like that. And what, what other sport would you have chosen if it wasn't boxing? Uh, You know, I really like football, but... uh. You know, my dad says I was I was a real good baseball player. I played a catcher in center field. So, um, you know, maybe if I was stuck with that, I would have been playing for the D-backs. Catcher? Holy yeah. crap, dude. Would you have – now, you probably would have stayed at center field, right? Uh, I actually didn't mind catcher, to be honest. Really, dude? Yeah, catcher was cool because I remember I'd, I'd always get, you know, how they steal the, steal the second base. I would get that full out. I always okay. get that guy out. All right. But how uh, about the knees, bro? The knees? Um – I don't know. Uh, it really didn't bother me. I was I was about well, you're 10, young. 11. Yeah, yeah, you're 10, young 11. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. You're so young, spry, and uh, and moving around that you don't feel anything. At yeah, that exactly. Age. That's beautiful. Now, do you remember that moment that you fell in love with boxing? Like, yeah, yeah. Your parent, your you know, your parents mm. can do it. Your grandfather yeah. can be in it. Your cousin can be in it. But until you kind of live it. And then that moment that convinced you, do you still remember that moment? I don't think it, um, I think I just stick with it because it kept me real disciplined. You know, you have to be disciplined. Uh, when it was time to make weight, you know, it was up to me. I chose to eat good and I chose to get up and run. And I chose when I wanted to go to the gym. And I think it just turned me into a whole better person, you know, um, physically and mentally, you know, and spiritually. So I think it's just, you know, I, I just stuck with it and I became a better person. And over time, it changed me. You've been on a roll. Obviously, you're 15. You're you're uh, you're coming in here and you are taking on your 15 and 12 KOs. Right. What how do you keep the record out of the entire process? Because obviously it's all, you know, Mayweather has made his entire career about having that. O next yeah. to it. You know what I mean? But when you step into that ring, you can't be thinking about those kind of things. You got to think about the dude you need to take care of. Yeah, uh, like you said, to be honest, like to be honest, I forget that I'm 15 and 0. You know, all I worry about is my opponent and what I need to do in order to get the victory and uh, look good. You know, boxing, you don't want to get hit, and you know, you want to take as as least amount of punishment as you can. And that's what we've been working on this camp. You know, Armando Resendez comes in throwing a lot of punches, and uh, he works real hard. So I'll be prepared to take on that task i always trip out with people that sometimes pick on mayweather because of that because uh -huh. he's the greatest defensive boxer i've ever seen to be quite honest smartest boxer as well yeah dude 
And, and so some people think that they just want him to sit there in the middle of the ring and just slug it out. And that would be stupid. Yeah. You know, like my favorite yeah. boxer of all time is Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. I'm old. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and, and Sugar one day got stupid and said, I'll stand in the middle of the ring con manos de piedra, Roberto Duran. No, bro. No. And you lost. Yeah. And that's where, remember what we just talked about? The anger, the, the ego gets in the way. Yeah. And then the very famous no mas, no mas fight happened after that because then he figured out, bro, I can't fight Roberto Duran's fight. I got to fight my fight. Yeah. You know what 100%. I mean? And, and in the ring, what do you do, Elijah, to make sure that boxer doesn't make you fight his fights? You know, um, it's about controlling the pace, in my opinion. You got to control the pace, you know. Like, for instance, I know Armando's going to come in, throw a lot of punches. He's going to try to work me, push me back. But if I control the pace with my jab and make him fight my pace and then, you know, land the shots I want to land, then I'll be able to pick up the pace whenever I want. And um, yeah, that comes with experience. I believe this fight and the next fight will help me, you know, help me with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny how sports are in soccer. A lot of times pace can determine, you know, what why one team is succeeding over another in football. The pace that you determine if you're going to be physical, if you're going to be fast that day, however it is that you are going to counter what you think they can't do, right? Yeah. And so when you're watching film, talk to me about how you break people down and trying to find what you can take advantage of. You know, I see what they do wrong. And I know what I do real good. And uh, if if I could get better at what I do good already and master it and, uh, you know, perfect it. So when the time comes in the ring, you know, I already know what they do bad. I just got to make it happen, you know, with what I'm already good at. So when you're looking at our, uh, when you're looking at your opponent, Armando, uh, I know don't, yeah. you're not going to give me the strategy now. Yeah. But but you, when you look at him, you, you talk, you just said he's going to come out firing, yeah. right? What's going to be the key for you to make sure you you live out that that initial push? You know, I gotta. Uh, I'll tell you. I I'll tell you a couple of things. I gotta land my jab, and he don't really move his head a lot. I've noticed he gets hit a lot, you know, and I don't get hit as much as much as he does. And uh, I'm sure he can't take as many hard punches. Like I, I'm pretty sure I hit hard. You know, right. I don't want to make that. I'm pretty sure I hit hard, and uh, I know, know I don't want to find out. Yeah, that's it, all I know. You want to find out? No, right now, right? Okay, I don't want to find so, out. You know, he's gonna have to move his head, and if you don't know how, then you might be in trouble. Okay. Uh, so what happens with the uh, the title fight there, uh, Canelo and uh, and Charlo? What do you think? To be honest, I think Canelo should win because he has the more experience fighting at 168. But I'm not gonna count Charlo out. Charlo's also a lot of heart. A lot of heart. He's skillful and, you know, he has power. But, you know, Canelo's been fighting the, the bigger guys longer, so he should have the experience. And Charlo has, ha, he's not used to taking the he's, pounding at this level, at it, the next two weight classes. That's exa yeah, exactly what I'm saying. But yeah, man. you got to, you know, you got to forget, and you can't forget, you cannot forget that Charlo is one of the best in the game right now, and he's here to prove it. The only thing that I'm thinking of Charlo that he may have is that chip on his shoulders one this fight for him he can make history exactly and then two remember his bro was supposed to be in this fight. yeah so there's a little like hey man i'm i'm in this ring also for my brother too so there might be a little is there yeah. is there anything to that uh, you tell me is there anything to that i'm not sure you know i think he's, just he already has a, so he already has a loss you know he's not scared to lose he already right. has a loss right so he's moving to weight you know he's trying to make greatness happen and uh you know He's trying, trying to become one of the best ever. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I'm not going to count him out. I'm looking at this picture of him right now. You know, he, I'm not going to count him out. He's he's a dog. Yeah, you know, no, he's a lion. No doubt about that. Hey, one more thing before I let you go. You're from Phoenix. Phoenix, yes, what sir. About, what about your sons, dude? My about, sons? Yeah, bro. They made some moves. Yeah, they got rid of eight, and I've seen that. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, they got rid of Van. Uh, I'm not. I'm not too concerned Getting Bradley about Bradley Beal. You guys are gonna. You guys. Uh, you got. You got four stars on that team. Yeah, dude. we'll You're see what it. happens. Um, uh, I'm a Suns fan. I like the little games. You know, my son. My son's real big basketball. He's only four. He's like three, three and a half. But you know, he likes to watch basketball. So maybe, maybe it's be the year we actually go to some games and stuff like that. But 
We'll see what happens. Oh, man. It's, it should be a lot of fun in Phoenix with all yeah. that stuff going on. That's what I'm saying. AZ's on the rise, man. AZ, like, you got you got the basketball blowing up. You know, the D-backs are in the playoffs. And now we got you got two pay-per-view, you know, two pay-per-view fighters on the fight tonight. Yeah, man. Uh, Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. All we need now is uh, – the, the Coyotes have got to do something over there, bro. That's yeah. that's it. Like, what the hell's going on, right? Yeah, that's, I'm not. I'm not a hockey fan, so I'm not. I do know that uh, they could be better. Yeah, they, <laughs> they could be a lot better because yeah. all the other sports are are doing good, man. Yeah, they, well, they gotta, the Cardinals were doing good. I'm not a Cardinal fan. I'm a Raider fan, but I I can't talk too much about the Raiders to be honest. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, no. I'm a no. Dolphins fan. Actually, yeah. Well, this is from South Florida. Yeah, I this, seen that. Yeah. yeah, it's a South Florida show, so. We're we're uh, we're in Miami. You guys are tearing it up. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's. A I lot should have fun. picked up Tua in fantasy. I messed up. I didn't think he was really that good because he gets injured. But I regret it. I'm the uh, I'm the only nutbag in town and maybe nationally that I've been on the Tua bandwagon from day one. And uh, I respect that. Yeah. I thought he was gonna. I, I thought he was real good out of college. And it's just the injuries, bro. Yeah, the that, injuries. That's, that's the only, when he's on the field, dude. I don't know how anybody doubts that he can't be a star. I. I you know, you watch it in Alabama, you see it now. Hard, you can't measure the heart of a winner, dude. Yeah. 100%. And that, that's what you were just talking about yep. with Charlo. Yeah. That while we all respect the shit out of Canelo and we know he's a badass, this dude can give him. A, you give him problems. Yeah, you, man. They prove Canelo's beatable. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And that's why, to me, you don't measure a man's heart. But when they, he shows you. And why are you doubting? Because yes. that dude came off the bench and won a national championship. Yeah. You got to have ice in your veins to do shit like that, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So kind of the ice that you're going to show stepping into the ring, man. All right. Elijah, Appreciate it. Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate thank you for you taking some time. Appreciate you. That's Elijah Garcia. This is the